Few symbols are as popular worldwide as the smiley face. It is now seen everywhere on social media. We send and receive this smiley to hundreds of people through messaging apps, and it's common on everything from stress balls to dishwashing sponges, even illegal drugs. Just two black dots and a line are the essence of a smiling human face and it expresses happiness. But today it is also an important asset of a company that is earning 500 million US dollars annually from it. But who was the brain behind this design icon and how did such a simple idea turn into a profitable business? And how did this smiley get out of the hands of its original creator and into the hands of someone else? How was this smiley discovered? Smiling human faces are depicted in thousands of ways. Although it has been a controversial matter, it is now more or less clear that the first to design the famous ideogram of the modern smiley was the American artist and designer Harvey Ball. He developed this design in 1963 at the request of Jack Adam, vice president of an insurance company in Worcester, Massachusetts. Jack Adam told Harvey Ball that at a time when the company is going through such uncertainty, he should create an image to raise the morale of the employees. Harvey Ball, who died in 2001, said it took him just 10 minutes to make the smiley and he received $45 for it. William Wallace, executive director of the Worcester Historical Museum, says the distinguishing elements of the smiley face created by Harvey Ball are a bright yellow background, a perfectly round shape and slight symmetry in the eyes and mouth. It is attributed to Harvey Ball that I had to make a decision. Should I use comps for the smile and eyes? Then it occurred to me that no, I have to do it without him. When it became the smiley, its design was later used on insurance company plates. The first batch of 100 badges sold by state mutual company employees and customers sold so well that they started producing 10,000 instead of 100. In just two years, these smiley badges have come out of the insurance company and are now being used by everyone. The inventor of the smiley face was not interested in copyrights in 1967, David Stern, a Seattle publicist, saw smiley faceplates in New York and used the idea for a campaign for the University Federal Savings and Loan Bank. According to David Stern, about half a million smiley face buttons were printed for the campaign. This was an important step in his sure popularity. But by the time it reached Philadelphia in the hands of Bernard and Murray Spain, it had become a valuable asset. Murray Spain redesigned it into a pizza box and stuck it on all sorts of things, including cards, posters, t-shirts, cups and lamps. They were no longer interested in using the smiley face for insurance or lending, but instead sold the smiley face itself. And since neither Harvey Bald nor Stern nor the Worcester Insurance Company nor the Seattle Bank bothered to obtain the copyrights for the smiley face, the brothers filled the gap. They entered phrases like, have a happy day with this smiley. These smileys from his site appeared on the pages of The New Yorker magazine in 1970 and on the cover of Mad Magazine in April 1972. It was a commercial trend. When business took off in the early 1970s, he made $2 million in just two years. The original creator of this smiley, Harvey Ball, was not interested in copywriting the entire rights. In a conversation with historian William Wallace, Harvey Ball said that when he saw that little face in the New Yorker magazine, he knew he had done something that captured the imagination of the world. Is the smiley company that turned it into a business. The complicated history of this popular smiley was added to in 1971 by Franklin Lochrany, a French journalist from the newspaper France Sur, who used a Harvey Ball-like face to indicate positive news. Franklin Lochrany, who claims to be its inventor, was aware of the economic utility of the small face. He was the first person to register it as a trademark. After registering the brand in his name, Lafreni left journalism and founded The Smiley Company. His strategy to popularize Smiley in France included giving out 10 million stickers to university students. Before long they were plastered on utility poles and cars across the country. They had become part of the culture at once. In the mid-70s, Lochrany and The Smiley Company began closing million-dollar deals with brands that wanted to use Smileys on their products. These include companies like Levi's, Benito's and M&M's. The 80s proved to be a golden decade for Lafrani's company and by the 1990s they had already registered smiley faces in over 70 countries. Today it is registered in almost 100 countries. In 1996, he handed over control of the company to his son Nicholas, who took over a year later and made smiley an integral part of digital communications. 
he designed hundreds of emojis or emoticons with different smiley expressions. These were the first graphic emojis. Today, the company makes no money from the use of emojis on phones and the internet. It's no longer part of our business, but we're happy that we've been able to introduce a new language, Lafrani Jr. said in 2016. According to Smithsonian Magazine, Nicholas Lafrani has said that the design of the smiley is so simple that no one person can claim to have created it. However, the Smiley Company website says it was created by Franklin Lacrani.